Hi, I'm Stormy Gibson, Interim Executive Director here at the Ohio Wildlife Center and SCRAM Wildlife Control. Our mission is to foster awareness and appreciation of Ohio's native wildlife through rehabilitation, education, and wildlife health studies. SCRAM Wildlife Control offers strategic, humane, and permanent solutions to human wildlife conflicts. We're dedicated to improving human wildlife relationships through compassion and respect. We value our local environment, the wildlife within it, and we strive to provide the best quality service that we possibly can. I'd like to welcome you to the Ohio Community Wildlife Cooperative Virtual Conference in 2021. Ohio Community Wildlife Cooperative Conference is um, dedicated to living with wildlife and resolving conflicts in Ohio coexisting with squirrels. And so the topic that we're gonna learn about is one about the most common types of animals that you'll see here in Ohio. And it's the most recognized. So we have uh, an Eastern gray squirrel here in the fall caching uh, nuts um, on our campus property. I wanna talk a little bit to you about um, the four different kinds of squirrels that we have uh, living in Ohio. Um, the most common is the, the Eastern gray squirrel, which is the squirrel right here. This is the one that you're gonna see in urban, suburban and residential areas, also rural areas as well. The little red squirrel is one of the smallest tree squirrels that we have here in Ohio. And these um, are often found in coniferous or evergreen areas. And then we have the big fox squirrel and the fox squirrel can be found within um, Ohio as well. The fox squirrel is much larger than your Eastern gray squirrel. It's gonna have a reddish tint or reddish brown tint to its body. And they'll often be living side by side with the Eastern gray squirrel. The red squirrel, although um, is very territorial and you would not often see any other types of squirrels living among them. The actual most common type of squirrel that we have here in central Ohio in the state of Ohio is actually the southern flying squirrel. Um, the southern flying squirrel is a nocturnal species, so you wouldn't see that species out during the day. And so this is um, why most people don't often um, associate the flying squirrel with uh, squirrels that you see um, out in Ohio. These animals are are active all year long. They do not hibernate. They do go into a short state of torpor, which is a short sleeping period during the winter times. Their diets include seeds, nuts, acorns, buds, berries, leaves, twigs, fungus. They'll even eat dog and cat food and trash. Um, they typically will breed in the winter and midsummer, so they can often have two litters of babies per year. How do you know if you have squirrels invading your home? Well, one of the things that you can kind of look for is a sighting. Do you have squirrels in your neighborhood or do you see squirrels in your backyard? You also want to do an inspection on your property because you can see chew marks or places where they've chewed on the wood or places where they've chewed on your sighting. You can also listen for those squirrels. And is it the time of day or time of year that you're seeing these animals or hearing these animals that might be invading in your home? Visual sightings, this is actually a squirrel's nest right here that you can see. Um, this is uh, basically a giant um, circular area of leaves. Um, sometimes people think these are bird's nests, but these are actually squirrel nests and you, they're very common and, and easily spotted during the winter months. And you'll see these about midway to high up into the trees. You also can sometimes smell squirrels. They are a rodent, so sometimes you can smell their urine and see their scat. Um, entry sites, you can see where sometimes the animal has chewed through your fascia board or wood on your home. Smudge marks or skin marks, areas where you can see the, the, their oils from their um, body that are going up and down gutter systems. Sometimes tracks, uh, squirrels are, have uh, very large uh, rear legs and smaller front legs, um, fur, and those um, biting marks. A squirrel sounds um, like this, and so it sounds very similar if it's making an alert call. So sometimes people call that a caw or um, a chuck, and it sounds very similar to a, a dog call or a or sped up dog call. Um, 
One reason that people sometimes have squirrels in their property, they don't make a connection between um, food sources and um, why animals are visiting their backyard. Uh, one of the most common reasons that squirrels are in neighborhoods is because of bird feeders. Uh, lots of people um, love the birds and love bird watching. What they don't realize is they're also feeding other animals such as the squirrels, raccoons, or skunks that might be living in your area as well. Compost bins and compost areas, dog or cat food that's left outside, gardens. Um, a lot of times we are planting um, backyard gardens and um, they are, uh, squirrels can enjoy uh, vegetables uh, that might be found in your um, backyard garden and even garbage bins. So squirrels can chew through plastic very easily. So a lot of times our uh, garbage bins are an easy target for squirrels to try to get in and eat some of our leftover garbage. Sometimes if you're not feeding the outside animals or the um, birds, you might also um, just have food sources laying around. Um, this is a pine cone, so they will eat pine cones. Um, acorns from oak trees, uh, walnuts from uh, walnut trees. And so you might even uh, be accidentally feeding uh, the squirrels just with some of the plants that you have uh, planted in your backyard. Another reason why um, you might have a squirrel issue or squirrels might be visiting your backyard is uh, water. Uh, food, water, shelter, and space is what the animal is looking for. And so you uh, may have, unbeknownst to you, some collected uh, water in some water sources. Uh, we ask that you please dump out these waters. Not only will it help to decrease the number of squirrels that you might ha be having in your backyard, but it also will decrease the uh, mosquito population, which we know can also be a zoonotic or a human issue. Shelter and safety. Uh, squirrels will often utilize um, our homes um, as a way to find a nesting area or a place where they can um, spend the winter. Um, they'll use decks, sheds, and porches. Uh, our foundations are often sometimes vulnerable to animals um, getting in. Side vents or attic vents, um, your drip edge on your roof, um, roof vents or junctures where your roof meets your chimney, um, your fascia and gutter bore or gutter systems also could be vulnerable to this. One of the ways that you can kind of decrease the amount of squirrel um, issues that you have is to trim back your trees. Uh, you can see that in this first picture here, the tree is very close to this home. Um, squirrels are very good at climbing and they can climb up brick walls, but they can also utilize trees in order to jump from the tree branch and onto your roof. And you can see on the other picture that this is an older home that we have pictured here. You can see that the wood is um, rotting and um, the trees are very close to the gutter system. So um, animals will utilize this, not only squirrels, but will utilize this as a way to be able to invade and get into your attic systems. Coexisting with squirrels, we want to make sure that we are trimming back our um, trees and bushes. Uh, you can use um, baffles in order to kind of prevent them from using the gutter systems in order to climb. But if you take away their food and their water and you take away their shelter, uh, the number of squirrels that will be invading your home will be uh, a lower number or limited to none because they are looking for a good place to have a habitat and a home and a family just like we do. And so utilizing um, knowledge about what is happening um, it, with the squirrels and the ways that we can fix why they're getting into your homes, um, that would be help decrease uh, your conflicts and help you to coexist uh, better with our wild neighbors. What can you do? Uh, you can assess your current state of affairs in your home. Uh, do a, a home inspection, walk around your property, see how close your trees are to your home. See if you have any unknown or um, food sources that might provide um, the, the squirrels uh, a good area to collect food and um, help store it for the winter. Um, you want to start making a plan. So um, right now it is winter time and the squirrels feel a need or getting close to winter time, they feel a need in order to be able to survive winter. And so they're going to be more aggressive in um, trying to find food, trying to find a place to sleep, um, and try to find a place to uh, be warm. And so you need to kind of look around. Um, if you do see potential increased activity, uh, you can kind of start doing some of these mitigation techniques by trimming back trees, uh, eliminating um, any food, making sure your water sources are gone. 
Um, and I really have high recommendation for habitat modification. Um, these trees that glow close to our homes um, really provide a really easy way for squirrels to be able to um, invade our attic systems. Um, squirrels can jump anywhere between six and 10 feet, uh, depending on the animal and the species. And so that's a really long way to jump between a, a tree that might be close to your um, porch or your, your roof. Um, consider what the results you want to achieve. Do you just want to keep the squirrels from invading your home? Do you want to keep them out of your backyard? Um, if you have uh, lots of oak trees or walnuts in your backyard, your ability to keep those squirrels out of your backyard are going to be very, it's going to be lowered. Um, that is a food source unless you cut down your trees. Um, it's not going to be one that you will uh, be um, We'll have good success with. Um, and make an informed decision regarding your next steps. Um, trapping squirrels and relocating them is not uh, a solution. Um, you'll, you have to address the problems that are in your backyard uh, or in your neighborhood um, if you're having squirrel issues rather than um, the squirrel itself. Because uh, if there is um, a food source, a water source, and a shelter source, you'll have another um, squirrel move into that territory. Um, this is um, an inspection. So we have um, a couple of our technicians walking around. They're gonna, he's gonna highlight um, some entry point areas. So you see the gutter and attic systems, the venting systems, anywhere that where the pitch um, uh, forms with the, the um, roof can have issues with um, invasion. And so you want to make sure that you have a ladder and you're getting um, the ability to get up there and really look at the situation. Um, Ohio Wildlife Center has um, a social enterprise. That social enterprise is called Scram Wildlife Control. Uh, SCRAM means Suburban Commercial and Residential Animal Management, and we were formed 20 years ago as a social enterprise of Ohio Wildlife Center. Uh, we are located here in Central Ohio and provide services to the Central Ohio area. We do 100% non-lethal services. Uh, that means that we are not trapping any of the animals that we're trying to help uh, folks coexist with. Uh, we use biological sound um, methodology, which means we work with the homeowner, we work with the animal, we work with the habitats, and we make sure that these solutions are permanent, whether it's um, an ex uh, a chimney cap or exclusion or um, fencing under the, the ground in order to keep these animals from um, invading and a peaceful coexistence between homeowners and um, animals in their uh, neighborhood. Um, some of the areas where you want to look at your home are your um, chimneys. Um, you want to make sure that you're looking at any food sources that might be provided. Uh, this one has a um, example of a garden. We have our bird feeders, a baffling system, which is a um, system that goes around the bird feeder can help prevent um, squirrels from climbing up that. Um, you also want to make sure that your trash cans are covered up, um, that you're monitoring um, chewing on your trash cans. Uh, you want and also make sure that you're not planting food sources that are delicious to our wildlife. Um, lots of people plant hostas and not realize that this is a, a plant that um, a lot of our wildlife uh, likes to eat. Um, our attic systems and our venting systems are um, also places where animals can get in. Why do you, should you choose SCRAM? Um, we are mission driven. Um, we are um, dedicated to provide permanent solutions and help prevent um, and resolve conflicts with wildlife uh, for people who um, are having issues with them. Uh, we use prevention and uh, we don't, um, we don't focus on the animal, we focus on the problem with the home or the habitat. Uh, we have non-lethal outcomes, which means that we are working bio with the biology of the animal, we're working with the homeowner, and we're also following our nuisance control operator license um, laws. Um, it, it helps to provide a coexistence between people and wildlife. Um, unfortunately, um, we moved into where wildlife lives, and so now we have to learn how to peacefully coexist with them um, because 
uh, one of the reasons is they're not going away. Um, and some of these animals like squirrels and other uh, native wildlife have adapted and, and actually thrive better around people. And it's a responsible approach. Um, we're not um, condemning the animals to um, a situation where they aren't um, going to be safe. And so this is a, a good solution to some of those uh, problems that might occur with wildlife. We are licensed and insured. Um, we are licensed to the Division of Wildlife and we are uh, certified with the National Wildlife Control Operators. We have technicians that are trained. Um, we also have uh, experience dealing with wildlife management for identification. Um, so we're looking at not only um, maybe the animals in your neighborhood, we're looking at SCAT. Uh, we're using other ways to um, correctly ID those animals and we're effective. Um, we know that animals have multiple den sites. And so if we kick them out of an attic or a chimney, we know that those animals will be able to survive because they have other options. Um, here's some pictures of some uh, uh, examples of what we might use or how we use our uh, knowledge. Uh, you can see that there's some um, skin oils and some tracks on the this uh, pole here that's got the gutter. So we're looking at those kinds of, th of things that you may not as a homeowner look for. Um, we also make sure that we are looking at and evaluating the attic systems and um, doing an entire home inspection when we come out. And then we also uh, do reuniting. So if there's something that happens, if uh, we realize that the mother is gone or if you hear lots of scratching um, during uh, baby season, we try to reunite those babies. And if they are unable to be reunited, then we are able to um, rehabilitate those animals at our wildlife hospital. Um, by doing the eviction, these animals remain in their home range. Um, they do have a uh, alternative den sites. They know um, all the food and water sources. Um, so if you're not uh, feeding the backyard birds, I'm sure a couple doors down would be feeding the backyard birds. Um, they will often um, relocate anyway because the nest uh, site is um, compromised because humans have now found it. And um, state law, we you are not allowed to um, translocate rabies vector species animals and then um, other animals can't be trapped and relocated without permission um, from the landowner. So uh, we're following uh, state guidelines and state laws in helping people coexist with their native wildlife. Um, this is an example of a one-way door that we use in order to try to, uh, we have evicted this squirrel. Um, he is outside of the um, attic system. Um, he was using a venting system with a with an, uh, chimney cap that was not appropriate. And so we have now um, evicted him and he can no longer get back into the uh, chimney system. And so now he's just out there kind of looking around and figuring out if, um, if, uh, his next options of where he's gonna go. Reuniting, um, we also use biological um, methods in order to make sure that we are um, taking care of the infants that could be possibly in um, the attic system. And so if we do have to remove um, infants, we use reuniting methods, which means that we um, help the animal um, the mother or the family member stay uh, with the, in order to retrieve the, the infants and, and translocate those animals elsewhere. Usually what we do is we work biologically with the animal. And so um, we're actually working with the um, mother so that we're doing some um, mitigation techniques where she comes in and no longer wants to have um, the uh, babies uh, in that area. If you are having um, conflicts with wildlife, you can contact us. Um, our uh, website is ohiowildlifecenter.org. Um, and we do have a telephone number for SCRAM. It's 614-763-0696. And then also, if you need to, you can always contact Ohio Wildlife Center if you have questions or comments about um, coexisting peacefully with your uh, native wildlife. And so some of the ways that you want to make sure that you're, if you're actually dealing with squirrels, is listening for sounds, um, looking for those habitat um, requirements that those animals might have, and then learning how to coexist peacefully with those animals in order to uh, 
remain um, as a good steward of our of our area. Uh, like I said, thank you so much for learning more about um, Ohio Wildlife Center, Scram Wildlife Control, and um, learning how to coexist of, coexist peacefully with your native wildlife and your squirrels that might be living in your backyard. <laughs>